can I help you, miss? Have you ever heard of an English sea captain called El Draco? El Draco? Not a very English name. I think that's what the Spanish would have called him. It was about the time of the Conquistadors. 16th century. Oh, I know. That's what the Spanish called Sir Francis Drake. Francis Drake? Have you got anything here that belonged to him? Indeed, miss. We have a couple of artifacts he brought back from one of his journeys. What can you tell me about the scrying here? Ah, that belonged to the alchemist and part-time Elizabethan spy, Dr. John Dee. It was brought back from the New World by Sir Francis Drake and presented to him. It's Mayan, you know. What is a scrying mirror? It's rather like a crystal ball, and you can't see anything in it. Apparently, he had a partner who used it to talk with angels. If you ask me, you were barking mad. It didn't look anything like the coyote stone. This one was like a little black shaving mirror. Is the scrying mirror the only piece of obsidian Drake gave to you? I think you should ask. There's another called the Jaguar stone. He never liked it, though. He said there were angels in the mirror, but devils in that stone. Can I take a closer look at Dee's mirror, please? No, you cannot. That's why the cabinet is locked. They tried some new-fangled interactive scheme. And you can guess what happened. Bloody kids ran off with half the exhibits. Hands on experience, my foot. In my days, it was hands off, I ask you. What do kids know about ancient Mayan civilization? Nothing. Can you tell me something about the Jaguar Stone? Certainly, miss. The so-called Jaguar Stone was brought back from the Americas by Sir Francis Drake and presented, with, as you already know, the more famous scrying mirror, to John Dee. The old loony didn't like the stone, though. Reckoned it was tainted by the devil. Come along, miss. I'll show you the mirror. I've already... Oh, never mind. There. John Dee's famous crying mirror, given to him by Francis Drake. Do you know if this mirror has any relevance to Tezcatlipoca? Who? Tizetlik... Tizletik... I can't even say it. Ah, oh, there's someone here who'll be able to help you better than me. This young lady has some questions to ask, Professor. I think she's from France. Professor Roubillet? Eh? What? You two know each other, do you? Uh, excuse me, the telephone. We meet again. Mademoiselle, France, eh? Yes, I believe that's where you live, Professor. I have a house there, on the outskirts of Paris, but I haven't been back for many months. I thought you were going to stay in Cuaramonte to witness the eclipse. Alas, business comes first. An important consignment of artifacts on loan to the British Museum. But I intend to return to Cuaramonte in plenty of time. Professor Oubier, your taxi's here. If you'll excuse me, I have some urgent business to attend to at the docks. Can you answer me some questions about the Jaguar Stone? Certainly, miss. If you just step this way. It's gone! Some sods have inched it. Half inched? Stolen it, miss. Never mind. The silent alarm will have been tripped. I'm afraid nobody can leave until our crack security team gets here. How long will that take? It could be a while. I think it's their tea break. The thief could be miles away by then. Don't you worry about that, miss. Just don't try to leave. It was too much of a coincidence that Oubier showed up and the stone promptly disappeared. I didn't have time for that crack security team to finish that team. I had to get after him.
I didn't steal the stone. I was nowhere near it. So who do you suppose did steal it? It was you, wasn't it? You loaf, miss. What would I want with an ancient Mayan artifact? I don't know, but I'm sure the police will get it out of you. Don't you think it's suspicious that Oubillé has urgent business at the docks? Not in the slightest, young lady. He's gone to oversee the unloading of cargo, an exhibition of Mayan sculpture on loan from Mexico City. What's the name of the ship? The Zibalba Princess, moored down by Tower Bridge. Why do you ask? Hmm. Just wondering. I didn't steal the stone. I was nowhere near it. So who do you suppose did steal it? It was you, wasn't it? You loaf, miss. What would I want with an ancient Mayan artifact? I don't know. But I'm sure the police will get it out of you. Don't you think it's suspicious that Oubillé has urgent business at the docks? Not in the slightest, young lady. He's gone to oversee the unloading of cargo, an exhibition of Mayan sculpture on loan from Mexico City. What's the name of the ship? The Zibalba Princess, moored down by Tower Bridge. Why do you ask? Hmm. Just wondering. It was a small key. Intended for a small lock. Look at this. The thief left this key in the cabinet. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That makes the theft an inside job, right? Oh dear. In other words, the thief was Professor Oubillé. Well, let's leave that for the police to decide, shall we? I'd better phone them right away. Hello? I knew I had nothing to worry about if the police were called. Yes, I'll hold. But I had to catch up with Oubillé, and fast. The doors were securely locked. There was nothing very useful in my bag, just a single hair clip. It was a hair clip. The key unlocked the case. I locked the case again and took the key. It was an obsidian dagger, thin and razor sharp. the handle open with the thin dagger. The room had been decorated to resemble the interior of a sailing ship. It was disturbingly effective. The top surface of the desk had a large recessed area set into it. I guessed it was intended to stop things rolling off in heavy seas. There was also an inkwell and, a few inches away, a small hole with a feather placed in it. That looked like that's where it was supposed to be, so I left it there. It was an indented well in the corner of the desk. 
I guess it was intended to hold ink, but it seemed unnecessarily wide. Maybe Ketch had used it to hold his rum bottles steady in heavy seas. It was one of those old pens made out of a feather. That might come in useful in ticklish situations. It was an old wooden barrel. Maybe it was from Ketch's ship. Yow! I should have known better than to put my hand in there. Grandma Stobart had a nasty experience in a water butt once. It was a ship's bell. Two bells and all's well. Pirates were cool. It was a shiny and very sharp looking pirate's cutlass. It would have been easy to reach the cutlass and slip it in my pocket. It would also have been the most regrettable action of my life. Maybe that wheel was from Ketch's ship. Suddenly, I was 12 years old again. Hard of port, bosun. Aye, aye, Captain Stobart. She cannot take it, Captain. The land's dead. Abandoned ship. Captain Frederick Ketch, 1570. Around his neck was a cross. Maybe he was a part-time pirate. It was the portrait of Captain Ketch. The portrait might have made a nice souvenir, but it was too large to carry. It was an actual pirate ship chart. Okay, I've had my hands on an historical document. Now what? It was a beautifully crafted model of a sailing ship. The ship looked too fragile to touch. It was an old book with spidery writing covering the open pages. March 20th. Sixteen hundred and seventy fix. Engaged frigate off Fan Falvador? It was garbage. Huh. I guess being a pirate didn't require too many academic qualifications. The passage went on to describe how Ketch had got wind of the approach of a fleet of English ships. It seemed the new governor had not shared his predecessor's views on Ketch's activities. They were out for his blood. Sailed to that place where I made secure my fortune. I return safe in the knowledge that the governor shall not discover that which I had hidden. For is it not writ that tis easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle 